Hey Soapies, welcome back to the channel. Yes, it's Friday Eve, Thursday, and we got more drama in LA going on. We are back to that whole mystery storyline, especially after coming off of the Brooke bedroom line. We got a whole lot of drama, and I'm telling you, I wonder how some folks are going to feel when they supposed to have kept a secret, but we know secrets don't stay secret for long. I'm going to give you a few highlights and then we'll dive deep into this episode. First, Liam learns that Will walked in on Bill and Poppy. We see Poppy pleading her case with Luna. Luna then tells RJ. RJ then tells Katie because Katie thinks she knows who kills Tom. So without any further ado, Let's go ahead and unpack this drama in L.A. for August 8th. So, we start off over at Forrester Creation where Brooke and Ridge are back from Monte Carlo and basking in the afterglow of her social media stardom. Now, as she and her sister Katie chat about this glamorous trip, Brooke is thrilled that the internet can't get enough of her Monte Carlo escapade. Who knew all it took was a little sunshine and some jet setting to turn you into an overnight sensation? Ridge, being the supportive one, announces with his signature suave charm that Brooke Bedroom Line is making a triumphant return. It's hotter and more alluring than ever with orders rolling in like waves on a French Riviera. Brooke Bedroom is back and better than ever, and he declares that we can practically hear the cash registers ringing. Now, as the office is buzzing with excitement, Brooke's reaction turns to more sinister matters. Yeah, that was an interesting shift. They shifted to the mysterious deaths over at Irgidino. She wants to uncover any updates on this unsolved case. Now, Carter decides that he want to make a phone call to get the latest news, but unfortunately, there's no nothing new to report. Sheila Carter's usual villainy is surprisingly absent from this mystery, leaving everyone scratching their heads on who's the person involved, and so they're bewildered. Now, Katie, of course, sensing something is off, suggests that everybody should just remain vigilant. She exits, and her mind is clearly elsewhere, leaving Carter to follow like a bloodhound on the scent of danger. And it's interesting how they said, we all gotta stay on guard um hollis and tom is nowhere near related to the foresters at all so what makes you think that they want to come after y'all y'all always think it's about y'all anyway rj gets a text message for luna so he decides to take off but not before ridge playfully reminds him to pick up that pizza because let's face it nothing says romance like a pepperoni now as the office clear out ridge and brooks sees this moment to indulge in some passionate canoodling their love story trying to be steamy with kisses i guess that could melt their polar ice caps and uh yeah i guess they're back in full force until i guess taylor comes comes back. Now we're across town over at Ir Giardino and Deacon is doing some damage control over the phone with the reporter assuring them that the restaurant is still a safe place to dine despite the recent tragedies. Katie arrives questioning about the deaths written all over her face. She pays her respects but then at the same time grills Deacon for answers dropping a bombshell that she's suspicious of Poppy not Sheila. Now, Deacon is surprised, but agrees saying that Bill Spencer was a fool to let Katie slip away. Now, Katie confessed that Poppy has always given her this weird vibe, the kind that makes your hair stand on end and send shivers down your spine. So now we're over at Bill Spencer's mansion, and Bill drops a bomb on Liam, revealing that Will walked in on him and Poppy in a compromising position. Now, to make matters worse, Lou Luna made a surprise appearance, prompting Bill to also encourage Will to accept her as his sister, talking about a family reunion going awkward. Now, Liam is understandably taken aback by all of this, but he reassures Bill that Will is a resilient kid and will bounce back. Now, Liam is happy to see how fatherhood being that he has a daughter, has changed Bill for the better. And Bill credits that newfound happiness to not only Poppy, but Luna as well. Clearly, in his house, love is in the air, even if it's clouded with a touch of scandal. 
Meanwhile, at Poppy's apartment, tension is thick enough to cut it with a knife. Now, Luna confronts her mom about Tom's backpack mysteriously showing up at their house. Poppy claims she has no idea how he got there and insists that Bill knows everything about her past and the claims of Tom's paternity. Now, the mom and daughter duo recalls an encounter with Tom where he delivered that pizza and left him a flyer for his show. Poppy then decided to go and take care of her things herself, determined to stop Tom from spreading lies about their family. Now, Luna, yes, she's skeptical, but desperately wants to believe her mom's innocence. Poppy is pleading with her daughter to trust her, invoking their Nazawa power to get through this time. Now, after a little bit of an awkward hug, Poppy decides to head over to Bill, promising Luna they'll tackle this mess later together. Once Luna is alone, RJ arrives to find Luna visibly shaken. He's determined to help her, but she's unsure where to begin. Now, eventually, she shows him the backpack and the letters from Tom, yeah, explaining the allegations of paternity. Now, RJ, ever concerned, listens intently to Luna explain her mom's potential involvement with Tom's death. But both Tom and Hollis die from overdoses. And with Poppy having the means and the motive, at least what they think, even though they should check the toxicology report to see what type of drug killed those two instead of mints, suspicion is mounting. Luna is torn between the love for her mom and the overwhelming evidence she thinks that she has against her. Now, RJ vows to help Luna unravel this whole mystery and assures her that they'll figure it out together. He then heads over to Ear Giardino to pick up that pizza that Bridge wants, but stumbles upon Katie and Deacon deep in conversation about none other than Poppy. Now, while Deacon steps away for a phone call, RJ approaches his aunt spilling the beans about Tom's back backpack and those letters and I'm wondering did he just end his relationship with Luna Zende you might want to get ready anyway Katie's eyes widen with intrigue as RJ divulges the details yeah this is the same one that said I don't like drama I didn't come back to LA for that where he's always in the middle of it of course, now sparking Katie's own suspicions about Poppy's involvement to Tom and Hollis's death. And finally, at Bill's mansion, Poppy arrives eager to be reunited with her love. Now, her time in the apartment has reminded her of how much Bill and their life together meant to her. Bill, being the ever-devoted partner, reassures Poppy of his commitment to her and their daughter. The two of them share a tender moment, blissfully unaware of the storm of secrets swirling around her and then they bring in the camera to have her looking suspicious which in my opinion I personally don't think that she did it because it would be too obvious but who knows about the bold and the beautiful writing so yeah I guess we have to stay tuned Okay, so there you have it. We have more drama on this episode than a Hollywood blockbuster. Let's get the conversation started down in the comments section. It's good to have Liam back. We haven't seen him in a while, and he learned that Will walked in on Bill and Poppy. I don't know. It looked like it might be a tough go because, uh, yeah, Will is not happy with his dad right now, and he ran right straight to his mom's house. Also, we see Poppy pleading her case with Luna. She don't know how that backpack got there. And she also said that she had nothing to do with Tom and Hollis's death. The question is, does Luna believe her? I'm not too quite sure. But what's the truth is what we need to know. She also, meaning Luna, told RJ about it. And RJ told Katie about it. And so, of course, now Katie is thinking that she might know who killed Tom, which she's thinking is Poppy. But I guess we got to stick around and find out. Also, make sure you check out the other recaps on this channel and our live chats midweek on Wednesday and also our full week chats on Friday nights. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you're notified every time a video is posted. Till the next one, we'll see you all soon. Bye, Soapies.